Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I will talk about the importance of being able to take compliments and criticism equally. The truth is, most of us love receiving and hearing compliments with all the positive things people have to say about us. But when it comes to criticism, we feel the opposite and we often take it to heart, receiving criticism in a negative way, even if there's truth behind it. It boils down to this simple fact, compliments feed our ego and criticism hurts our ego. Being open to constructive criticism is essential to your growth and evolution. Without being open to hearing what we can improve on or what areas require our attention, we stay stuck in old patterns and behaviors because we aren't open to improving for not only ourselves, but for those around us. There will always be something or some area you can improve on. So the next time you hear criticism, take it in the same way you would take a compliment. Remember, neither compliments nor criticism should get to your head or heart. As the saying goes, accept both compliments and criticism. It takes both the sun and the rain for a flower to grow. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, you play Trina on General Hospital. So let's talk a little bit about your character and what are some challenges that she goes through? Man, Trina has been <laughs> being kidnapped and then her dad dying and then coming back to life and lying about his death she has been through it all but i think trina's a really strong character a really strong friend and someone that doesn't take no for an answer wardrobe provided by h and m next up on the show we have general hospital star sydney michaela sydney can also be heard in a lead role as wolf in kippo and the age of wonder beasts streaming on netflix sydney thank you so much for being on the show today how are you doing I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. And I was just telling you how much I love your eyeshadow. Yes, <laughs> it looks you. amazing. Yes, I'm just saying. I just kept using the brush until it just filled up. <laughs> so let's just dive into it and talk about when did you develop a love for acting and realize this is something I want to pursue as a career? Well, I started acting when I was five. My oh. first show, Yo Gabba Gabba, which was huge for me. I loved that show growing up. But when I was 10, I got to play young Gabby in the Gabby Douglas story. And getting to work with Gabby Douglas herself and Miss Regina King really just pushed me and taught me, like, this is really what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And what were your first steps to, you know, take your career to the next level? What were the steps that you took? Well, I definitely had my mom coach me through a lot of it. I took a lot of acting classes at Amazing Grace Conservatory, and I just took a lot of acting classes around LA. And I think that's really how you become a better artist is just surrounding yourself with people that think like you. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, like one of your major big breaks was the Gabby uh, Douglas story. So let's talk about that and your character and your whole experience in the movie. Well, it's very cool because we shot it in Winnipeg, Canada. And this oh, is nice. Very so nice cool um but it was just an amazing experience i thought it was so cool to fly out of the united states to be able to stay somewhere for six weeks it was just a life-changing experience for sure mm -hmm. and now you play trina on general hospital so let's talk a little bit about your character and what are some challenges that she goes through man trina has been <laughs> being kidnapped and then her dad dying and then coming back to life and lying about his death she has been through it all but i think trina's a really strong character a really strong friend and someone that doesn't take no for an answer and you know i always wanted to star in a uh, soap opera uh, like is there a difference between a uh, soap opera and just a jet like a movie is there a difference do you feel like you have to be more dramatic for a soap opera People think that it would be that way, but I really don't think it is, especially because, you know, we're in 2021 now, so people think it's like this big, dramatic overacting, but people really don't want to watch that these days. They just really want to watch, you know, real people have real problems, and I think that General Hospital does a great job of capturing that. Mm -hmm. And you've also dove into the voiceover world with Kippo and the Age of Wonder Beast on Netflix, so talk to us a little bit about that role and your experience. Uh, it is so extremely fun to do, and it's a complete 180 of what I do on General Hospital, so it's so fun. Um, Wolf is a 10-year-old, basically superhuman, that protects her pack, and um, she's just really fun to play. She's got so many levels, so being able to play her vulnerability and just her toughness, I think it was a role model that a lot of people wanted to see and needed, and I was just lucky to play her. Mm -hmm. And what do you prefer? Do you prefer acting in movies or voiceovers? Like, wh Which one do you prefer better? 
I like doing all of it, honestly. You know, I think it really just makes a good actor when you don't get stuck in one thing, like, oh, I'm just going to do this or that. Like, I really love doing it all and just challenging myself. Mm -hmm. And do you have a method to kind of prepare yourself mentally uh, to do movies or shows? Because it's, it's difficult. So what, what kind of, how do you prepare for your roles? Mm, that's a good question. I think for a lot of them, people forget that you really have to physicalize the character. That if you feel and look like the character, you are. So I remember for Trina's audition, I wore these kind of like roughed up boots that I had because she was from New York. So I remember that was really important to me to keep me grounded in the character. Mm -hmm. But I also remember for Wolf, I would also wear kind of like baggy clothing and things like that because she's not a fashionista at all. She's very, very survivalist mode. So I think physicalizing characters and just seeing how would I dress or how would I stand as this character really changes how you act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very true. And, you know, you've had obviously a ton of milestones in your career, but what's been your most memorable for you? Hmm, that's a good one. I've got some pretty cool stuff coming up, so I would say that's pretty memorable. But I definitely think the Gabby Douglas story was super memorable, as well as working on Fuller House on Netflix. Um, getting to work with a live studio audience is just something that is so incredible and rare, especially because of COVID now. So just being able to do that, like be part of one of the last shows with a live studio audience was just incredible and something I will never forget. Mm -hmm, definitely. So for a young actor, any anyone out there that's, you know, seeing you on TV, talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced, you know, to get where you are today. Yeah, um, there was definitely a, a period where I really wasn't booking jobs at all, like especially in that middle school period. I really just wasn't booking. But what I did to get through that phase was just, like I said, surrounding myself with like minded artists. You know what I mean? When you really get into it and realize why you're doing it is because you love it. It doesn't matter that you're not necessarily getting the jobs you want or doing what you necessarily want to do always because you're around like minded artists and you're in it for what you want. And you're in it for the passion and the love of it. Mm -hmm. And how did you get through the no's in auditions? Because that's the difficult part. I also do a lot of auditions. I do some commercial work as well. So how do you get through the no's? Because everyone has their ways, but how do you kind of cope through rejection and push forward? Uh, I mean, I kind of just believe if, if it's not for me, it's not for me. You know, a lot of opportunities that I'm especially seeing now are really because of things that I've done in the past. And I kind of am grateful. Like when I was younger, I always thought that I wanted to be this huge Disney Channel star, like, oh, you know, do the wand of Disney and everything. But as I got older now that I'm 18, I'm like, I don't think I could have handled that much fame that young. So, you know, it was difficult for me because I feel like I really was part of like, you know, the finalists for a lot of those Disney shows. But as I grew older, I realized like, yeah, that wasn't for me yet. So I think you really just have to trust the process because I wasn't ready for that amount of fame at nine, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You know, opportunities come to you when you're ready and at the right moment. Sometimes when you get an opportunity and it doesn't work out, you look back and you realize maybe it wasn't the right timing. So I love that you said that, you know, what's meant for you, we'll, you'll, you'll get it eventually. And I also saw that you've been accepted to 14 colleges, so your brains and beauty. So let's talk about that. What are the next steps for you? Oh, good question. So yes, I've been to 14 colleges. Um, I'm just super excited to be in all of them and I will announce my decision May 1st. So we're getting close. Some of the colleges are kind of tight lipped with some of the information we need. But once we get it all, I'll be committing very soon. So I'm really excited for that and really excited to see what my next steps are. Yeah, and you have a lot going on. So how do you balance it all? How do you have a work like balance when you have so much on your plate? That is an amazing question. <laughs> um, I think the best thing you can do is really sacrifice and sometimes step outside of your comfort zone. Uh, Pre-COVID, I actually took a break from public high school and I went into more of an independent schooling and everyone told me like, oh, don't do that. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad for your social life. But taking that break actually gave me a really big chance to focus on my writing skills and you know, really work on my essay writing, which ex was extremely helpful when applying to university. So I really think that it's important that if possible, you need to step outside of your comfort zone, just everyone if you can, and you know, you really will grow. Mm -hmm. I think that's great advice. Uh, last week we had legendary boxer Lennox Lewis, and that's the same thing that he said is, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and that box that we put on ourselves. Sometimes we need to step out and, you know, look at the bigger picture. I want to talk about all the exciting projects you have coming up. Oh, I can't release them all, I'll get in big trouble. But 
you can check me out as Maya on Craig of the Creek. You know, it's really important. I was just, you know, with everything happening in the news, I was just like looking at media that really isn't focused around black trauma mm -hmm. and isn't like, just talking about the historically hurtful things that we've been through. And I think Craig of the Creek really like represents that in an amazing way. I just think it's such a fun show full of representation and it's just like really funny and comedic and with everything going on, it's really great for the whole family. And I also play Olivia in uh, The Barbarian and the Troll and that is such a great show as well. The comedy is so smart and it is a puppet show as well. Know, yeah. so that's another show that's really great for the whole family and it's on Fridays on Nickelodeon. Amazing. Sydney, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. It's incredible to see. Congratulations on being accepted to 14 colleges and universities. That's amazing and huge. So keep it up and we hope to have you on the show soon. Yes, hopefully I can come in person. I love Canada. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.